Welcome to Storytime with the UC Riverside Libraries, presented to you by the Finals Week Stress Relief Team. We're bringing you a series of exciting stories originally curated by the Brothers Grimm. Today's tale is about being at the right place at the right time. So sit back, relax, listen, and read along with, if you like, to Dr. Know-It-All. Tales from Grimm Freely translated and illustrated by Wanda Gag Dr. Know-It-All Once there was a peasant, and he was very poor. All he had in the world was a patch of woodland, a two-wheeled cart, and a pair of oxen to pull it. From time to time he chopped down some of his trees, cut them up into logs, and carted them into the village. If he was lucky enough to find a buyer, he would sell the wood for two dollars a load. One day, this peasant, Fish, for that was his name, took his ox cart full of wood to the village and sold it to a doctor. While Fish was standing at the open door waiting for his two dollars, a powerful smell of rich savory food reached his nostrils. Fish peeped in the, at the door. There was a doctor's dinner laid out on the table, all steaming and ready to eat. Soup and roast, juicy vegetables, a frosted cake, and a dish of such luscious fruit as poor peasant fish had never even laid eyes upon. Oh, thought the poor man, if I could only be a doctor too, and eat such heavenly dinners. This set him thinking. After the doctor had given him the two dollars, the peasant lingered in the doorway, twirling his cap this way and that, and at last he asked whether he might not learn to be a doctor too. Why not? said the doctor. It's easy enough. And how would one go about that now? asked Fish. First of all, said the doctor, you must sell your two oxen in the cart. With that money, you must buy some fine clothes, also a few medicine bottles, pills and pellets, salts, saws, and so on. Next, you must get yourself a book. One of those ABC books will do, the kind with a rooster inside. And last of all, you must get a board with the words, I am Dr. Know-It-All, painted on it. And this you must nail over your door. Fish did all this. Over his door hung the newly painted sign, and his room was a shelf full of medicine bottles. On his table was the ABC book. While he himself was so fine and grand, he felt like someone new. With his spectacles, his long-tailed coat, his watch and pointed beard, he really looked as though he knew it all. He was ready to start. But day after day went by and nothing happened. There he sat among his salves and pills with not a thing to do. At last someone came, and a lord no less. This lord had been robbed of a big sum of money, and he, when he saw the sign, I am Dr. Know-it-all, he said to himself, that's just the fellow I want. If he really knows at all, he will surely know who has stolen my money. He knocked at the door, and when Fish heard him, he straightened his spectacles, gave a pull at his watch chain, put on his tall hat, but took it off again, and at last he opened the door. So you are Dr. Know-it-all, said the rich lord. Oh yes, said Fish. I want you to find my stolen money, said the lord. Can you come with me now to my palace? Yes, indeed, said Fish. And my wife Gretel, can she come too? Certainly, said the lord. So they all stepped into his coach and drove off. It was the dinner hour when they reached the Lord's palace, so he invited Fish and Gretel to join him. They all sat down at the table, and when the first servant came in with a dish of soup, Fish whispered to his wife, Look, Gretel, that is the first. He meant that this was the first course being served, but the servant, who had overheard him, thought he meant that this was the first thief who had stolen the Lord's money. As he was really one of the thieves, he became worried, and when he reached the kitchen, he said to the other servants, Things will go ill with us now, now that this Dr. Know-it-all is around here. Just think, as soon as he set eyes upon me, he told his wife that I was the first thief. The other servants gasped in alarm, and when the bell tinkled for the next course, the second servant hardly had the courage to go into the dining room. But what could he do? It was his turn to serve. He tried to look innocent as he entered with a dish of steaming food, but Fish leaned over to his wife and whispered, See, Gretel, that's the second. 
He meant that this was a second course, but the servant thought that he himself was meant, and his knees knocked together as he rushed back into the kitchen. When the third servant came in with still another dish, it was the same. Fitch nudged his wife, whispering, and that, Gretel, is a third. The third servant, his hair standing on end, set the dish on the table and dashed into the kitchen as fast as he could. Luckily, the Lord had noticed nothing. He had been too busy thinking up some way of putting Dr. Know-it-all to the test. And now he said, Doctor, here's the fourth servant with a covered dish. If you really know it all, you should be able to guess what is in the dish. Poor peasant fish. How should he know what was in it? He looked and looked at the covered dish, and at last, seeing he was caught, he said, Oh, you poor fish, you're done for. As luck would have it, there was a fish in the dish, and now the Lord cried, Well, well, doctor, you've guessed it. Now I know you can find my stolen money, too. Poor peasant fish. He was in a fix, and no mistake about it. He was still racking his brains for something to say when the fourth servant, who was just leaving the room, winked meaningly at him. Fish excused himself from the table and followed the servant into the kitchen. The servants looked greatly frightened and said, Oh, doctor, you told your wife we were the thieves who stole my lord's money, and it's true, but we'll give it all back to him and we'll reward you besides, if you'll only promise not to tell on us. Fish promised to keep their secret, and they showed him where the stolen money was hidden. When he returned to the dining room, he cleared his throat and stroked his beard, saying, Hmm, hmm, so you want to know what's become of your money, my lord? Hmm, hmm, well, well, I'll have to consult my book about that. He sat down and spread the ABC book on his knees. Then he put his spectacles on his nose, and with an important air, he began to look for the picture of the rooster. Meanwhile, the servants were curious to know whether the doctor would really keep their secret. So the fifth servant was sent in to listen. He snicked in on tiptoe and hid in the oven. All this time, Peasant Fish, or Dr. Know-it-all, whichever you wish to call him, was still paging back and forth in his ABC book, but he couldn't find the picture of the rooster. At last, he lost his temper and shouted, You rascal! I know you're in there, and I'll find you yet! The servant who was in hiding thought that he was meant. He jumped out of the oven, yelling, Hula! The man knows everything! Dr. Know-it-all, who had found the rooster at last, looked pleased, closed his ABC book, and cleared his throat again. Hmm, hmm, he said. Yes, well, well. And now as to your stolen money, my lord, I can show you just where it is. He led the lord to the place where the servants had hidden the money, saying, You see, my lord, here it is, every penny of it. The lord was pleased, so pleased, in fact, that he grabbed a big handful of gold, pressed it into Fish's hands, and said, well done, my good doctor, and my undying thanks to you. I will spread your fame far and wide. This he did too, and from that time on, Fish and his good wife Gretel lived in wealth and ease, had plenty of good food to eat, and rode about in a fine carriage. The End Well, I hope you enjoyed today's Brothers Grimm installment. I know I did. You can find many more titles like this by visiting the UC Riverside Library catalog at library.ucr.edu. See you next time.